Hi, I'm Rick Martin, Director of Communications and Community Relations for Douglas County. COVID-19 is slowly increasing. And as we approach the summer months, we speak with Dr. Janet Meemark, District Director of Cobb and Douglas Public Health, and get the latest update. Welcome back. I'm here with Dr. Janet Meemark, District Director of Cobb and Douglas Public Health. Thank you for joining us, Dr. Meemark. Thanks for having me. It's been a while since we last spoke. What's going on with COVID? Now it's our favorite topic. Everybody uh, these days don't want to hear about it, but um, I wanted to give you some general updates um, uh, right now. So, um, so right now we are exper experiencing what I like to call a mini surge at this point. Okay, so it doesn't compare anything to what we had in the winter time. So when we had to deal with the Delta surge and the Omicron surge, this is we have a mutant of the Omicron mutant this time. It's a BA two one two one. Um, it's representing about 40% of the cases that we're, we're seeing. Very contagious, um, but what we're seeing right now is maybe not as virulent or as severe as previously. So what we have right now, over the last week, we have about a 22% increase in cases, and over the two weeks, we've had a 66% increase in cases. Now, hospitalizations have gone up about 19%, and we are seeing that in the district as well. But the cases are, it's a low number though. So it's keeping our overall community transmission at low, which is good. So not anywhere near where we were previously. But you may start hearing people that will come back and say, I tested positive for COVID, I've got sniffles, this and that, and then it's gonna come back COVID. So we are seeing substantial community transmission at this point, although thank goodness people are not being hospitalized, hospitalized at a very high rate. So people shouldn't really feel comfortable uh, and stop wearing their mask. They should continue wearing their mask. That's a great question. So most of us should be okay, right? Now, once again, if you're going to like crowded places, there's gonna be a whole bunch of people there and maybe you haven't had your booster in a while, like more than, you know, five, six months, if, you had, if it took a while, um, you, you might be a little bit more concerned. But the people who should be more concerned are the elderly and folks who have immunocompromising conditions, okay? So your immunity is not gonna be as good. So you, if you were elderly or you have any of those conditions, you would be more concerned or should be and probably mask up if you're going to crowded places at this point. Gotcha, gotcha. Dr. Meemark, what can you tell us about boosters? And more importantly, what can you tell us about boosters being recommended for children ages 5 to 11? Yeah, so we're really excited. So we got some boosters that have been um, announced for children 5 to 11 as well. So very good. And so now that is recommended, it's, I think it's about four months after you get this, the first two series. Um, I get this question a lot from folks. When should I get the, the second booster? So the first booster, you know, was happening um, kind of during this time about when the Delta Omicron, that's when I got my booster shot. So it was natural. We were having trouble at that point. If you can get the booster, get it done, right? So I had it done at that point. Um, I'm not eligible for the second booster, but there are a lot of people who are that ask me, you know, when should I get it done? So over the last few few months, I've been it's been quiet, thank goodness, right? So I didn't tell people, go run out and get your booster right away. Right. We are now seeing kind of an uptick in cases and transmission is much greater. If you were over 50 and you ha and, or you're immunocompromised, you can be 12 and older, immunocompromised, um, this is a good time to get your booster, okay? Because right. cases, you're going to have a much higher chance of going and getting in contact with someone that can transmit COVID to you. And if your immune system is not the best because of age or because of a condition, then this is a good time to get it done and give yourself that extra protection. Oh man, that is great. Do you have time for more? Always. Oh, for our citizens, they'll love that. Always. We'll be right back. Hey Bobo, do trees tell each other stories? I'm sorry, I'm afraid I don't know that. Hey, why don't we go find out? Listen. I don't remember how it started. Not today. Oh boy. Our back and forth. It always came back. Nice Dad! You probably don't remember what you told me. That was perfect. But I heard every word.
I want you to get the vaccine because I want you to be safe. I don't want you to be a patient. I take care of you in the hospital. That's what I'm scared of. I hug you. Yeah. <laughs> Love you. Love you too. Welcome back. I'm Rick Martin, Director of Communications and Community Relations for Douglas County. We are continuing our COVID update with Dr. Janet Meemark, District Director of Cobb and Douglas Public Health. Dr. Meemark, now the next question I had, we are seeing a COVID mini surge, should we consider mask again? And I know you touched base, yeah. but just clearly, yeah. should, we, should we or not? Yeah, so I think that the most important thing is that if you have um, uh, any reason to have a lower immune system, like if you're older, well, than the age of 50, unfortunately, or if you're immunocompromised due to some conditions, and, and I would include like diabetes as a condition, okay? So just so if you're wondering, because if your diabetes is out of control, then your immune system is probably not the best, right? right. Um, when you go out and about into crowded places, I would mask up. Okay, um, and anybody anybody who is immunocompromised. Um, but you know, in general, you know, I always if I'm going to places and I feel like I'm being crowded, then you know, I will still mask up. But otherwise, you know, mostly outside and and in um, less sparsely populated places, I won't I, I won't be as concerned. That's great. Appreciate that. That's great. Appreciate that. Mm -hmm. Now switching gears a little bit here, hepatitis. Yeah. That has been mentioned in the news quite a bit lately. What can you tell us about that? Yeah, so unfortunately we're dealing with several things at the same time right now. Uh. So hepatitis, so just so the public knows, hepatitis involves your liver. And so what it means is having an inflammation of your liver. And it's up here in your right upper quadrant of your belly. Lots of, there's lots and lots of reasons why you can have it. Like if you have a, a virus, a, you know, a passing virus, like, you know, the EBV virus or adenovirus, you can get, you know, some inflammation. Now there's, and there's the most common ones that you've heard of, the hepatitis, right? The hepatitis viruses, A, B, C, there's D and E multiple viruses and there's different ways that you can get that so you can get it blood borne transmission you can get um, hepatitis c remember from um, old blood transfusions right. as well as iv drug use tattoos those kind of things mm -hmm. um, and there's screening for these for these hepatitises what we're seeing right now though is we're seeing um, there's a couple of um, hundred cases 180 about in the united states but they're being seen in children and so this is a very different scenario. Children usually do very well when they have a transient hepatitis. But what we're seeing, unfortunately, is that, you know, um, there have been multiple children that have actually received um, liver transplants, which is highly, highly unusual. And so, and we've seen it in, um, you know, different states, and I think Alabama had one of the main clusters. So what we're doing right now, the CDC is taking a look, and they're trying to figure out what is happening right now. The adenovirus has been mentioned, which is kind of a common cold virus. Um, they have seen that it's been linked in, in some of the cases, but not all of the cases. So right now they're still trying to figure out um, what could be causing this severity of hepatitis in children. So you might be asking yourself, well, I'm a parent, I don't know anything about hepatitis, what should I do about this, right? So. Keep an eye on your kids. You know, they're going to have passing things. Um, things that you can see with hepatitis is oftentimes you can get nausea, vomiting, diarrhea mm -hmm. if the child starts having pain in that area. Um, but one of the really telltale signs is if they get that yellowing of the eyes. So in the whites of your eyes, if you start seeing that yellow, orangish look, yeah. call your doctor right away. Because um, that is, is a telltale sign. You've probably got something going on in your, your liver area. So do you have more? Because I understand there's something else our citizens will be interested in that's important yeah. for them to know. On the same thing or you want to go to the next one? <laughs> well, hey, we'll be right back. <laughs> Greetings, Douglas County. My name is Kelly Robinson, Vice Chair of the Douglas County Board of Commissioners and Commissioner of the Second District. We have a very exciting and very important program that we offer the citizens called Connect Douglas. Connecting you to wherever you have to be where you are. I want to thank all the staff that are here on support for you guys whenever you need a ride anywhere you want to go. Again, Connect Douglas, connecting you to where you want to be. Hmm, 
maybe you can make retirement happen. After all, you made her college years happen. Watcha. Opening that education savings account when she was little. Spearheading a campus tour. And another, and another, and another, and another. Bam! Deciphering financial aid. She was like, what? And now she's like, yeah! you waste planning for college. Now get the tips you need to get on track at aceyourretirement.org. Hi, I'm Dr. Cindy, and I'm here with Asha. What would be the thing that makes you say, you know what, now's the time? I've been on the fence for a while about whether to get the vaccine or not, based on, you know, things that I've heard, things that I've seen. Seeing those kind of things just gets you a little scared. It's like, I think everybody should have a choice. Could the vaccine possibly affect my ability to have kids in the future? Here's the real kicker. If someone got COVID-19, the illness, and they were pregnant, their chance of miscarriage goes up by over three times as much. I didn't think about COVID-19 possibly affecting your reproductive system. Because my mom, she was barely able to have kids. It was a miracle that I was able to be here. It was very important for me to know that. And now I am a lot more secure in getting the vaccine than I was. Welcome back, everyone. I'm Rick Martin, Director of Communications and Community Relations for Douglas County with my wonderful esteemed guest, Dr. Janet Meemark, District Director of Cobb and Douglas Public Health. Wow, you've given us a lot of information, you know, but another topic we've been hearing about, hearing a lot about as a matter of fact lately, is the monkeypox virus. What is this? Yeah, so I never thought I would be talking to anybody about this, first of all. But um, so, you know, uh, monkeypox is actually a virus that, you know, from its name, you can get from monkeys. And it's not like we've never had it before, but usually it's when, you know, um, tourists go to like West Africa and they, you know, play with monkeys and you accidentally get scratched or bitten and then you start having some symptoms, then you get concerned about monkeypox, right? And so what it is, is it, you know, it's um, like a lot of the other viruses that we have, like chicken pox, where you can get a rash and fevers and things like that. Now here's what's a little bit different is we're starting to see it that, and that's not in connection with Africa or monkeys. And so now we're starting to see a little bit of a kind of person-to-person -person transmission of this. And yeah, and so this is why it's, it's quite concerning. We've seen multiple cases in the United Kingdom and, um, and clusters in the United Kingdom. And then we have one case here in Massachusetts. And so they have gotten a little more information on this one. And so they wanted us to share a little bit of that information as well. So gotcha. things that you should be looking for in monkeypox. So um, it it's going to sound very similar to the other rashes that, that you may get and other viral syndromes. So you can have a fever, you can get lymph node enlargement, you get these rashes that can get pustules and then they can kind of scab over. Um, you can get that general malaise and fatigue feeling from it, okay? Um, you can get it on your hands and, and your feet, um, the rash, and you can get it in your genital area as well. What they have seen in the cases in the clusters at this point, so they have seen it First of all, if you have gone to the area, you know, to West Africa and you have, you know, been around the animals and things like that. So that's one thing. Um, if you have um, been around somebody that has had the same symptoms, okay, even though you didn't go or, you know, that person might have had symptoms and you recognize that and you were around that person. You can get it through, you know, the pustule contact and um, through, um, you know, bodily fluids. Um, but, um, you yeah, there is some thought that you can get some respiratory, um, you know, big respiratory droplet type of thing. Um, the, the, so that's the second way is through somebody else. And the third way is what they're seeing from um, men who have intimate contact with other men that they are seeing that you can get it that way too. So there's just kind of three kind of risk groups to take a look at. And, but if you've definitely been around somebody that had, you know, you notice some pustules or rashes on them or they weren't feeling well and then all of a sudden you don't feel well, um, you might want to follow up on that. Okay, okay. incredibly invaluable uh, advice and recommendation. So thank you. Talk to me, Mark, is there anything else you'd like to say or inform the Douglas County citizens? 
Um, you know, the main thing is to protect yourselves at this point, right? We've got a few things going on. Um, you know, what would take care of all three a whole lot? Well, you know, some good hand washing and not getting, you know, too close to too many people, right? So um, make sure you get your booster shot. This is a good time to get it if you're eligible. If you skip that first booster or you're eligible for the second, so you're over 12 with any immunocompromising conditions or over the age of 50, this is a good time to go ahead and get those boosters, okay? Um, the other thing I wanted to, you know, just let people know, I know there's a, this is completely off topic, but there's um, some infant um, um, formula shortages right yes, now. Yes, yes. And I did want to let everybody know that the state is working very hard um, to have different options. So um, the one thing I heard was that, um, you know, formula that gets returned, we used to not be able to use that at all, but now that can be donated to some food banks. And so if you can't find any, you might want to check with the food banks. And then they've also um, broadened some of the eligibility criteria for which kind of formula you can get. So you can get like some different formulations as well as some like um, different kind of like bigger um, uh, amounts and things like that. It's okay. not that that strict, um, there's, there, you're doing some waivers at this point. So there's, you have a couple of things to try to help you out, but let us know, um, you know in the health department if you need additional help. Well, thank you so much. Thank you for joining us. And please be sure to like, follow, and subscribe to all of our social media platforms. I'm Rick Martin, Director of Communications and Community Relations for Douglas County. Thanks for watching.